So that is qualifying for the 2019 Singapore we've just had. And again, we had another great, exciting and thrilling session in 2019. And today, I'm going to take you through what happened, the results and how the teams performed and who did well and not so well. And let's just get straight into it. So here are the results of qualifying for the 2019 Singapore Grand Prix. So Charles Leclerc shockingly got pole position. Lewis Hamilton is second. Sebastian Vettel third. Max Verstappen fourth. Valtteri Bottas fifth. Alexander Albon is sixth. Carlos Sainz is seventh. Daniel Ricciardo eighth. Nico Hülkenberg ninth. And Lando Norris tenth. And then from P11 to P20, it's Perez, Giovinazzi, Gasly, Raikkonen, Magnussen, Kvyat, Stroll, Grosjean, Russell, and Kubica. But now, let's get into the teams. And first off, the Silver Arrows Mercedes. Now, they will definitely be disappointed with this, um, this qualifying session because they thought coming into the weekend and after practice too that they did have the fastest car um, at this circuit and they haven't got pole position which at this circuit is so crucial so that is definitely disappointing for them i think lewis hamilton did he do the best he could maybe he could extract more time but i think he you know 90 percent he did you know the best he could from you know 90 percent of what he could do um for Valtteri Bottas, he definitely didn't do well. Valtteri Bottas, P5. Valtteri was actually looking really strong until Q3. Actually, until the final run. Because after the first run in Q3, he was behind Hamilton. But only by half a tenth or something like that. And then he ends up being, what, eight tenths behind when it matters most. Very disappointing. For Valtteri Bottas, I think considering the pace of the cars, I think Valtteri should have been P4, honestly. I think that would have been a good enough result considering where Lewis Hamilton qualified. So yeah, Valtteri, not quite good enough, I'm afraid. Uh, but going into the race tomorrow, Mercedes are still in a very good position to win the race because they do have a faster car race pace wise than Ferrari unless Ferrari's new upgrades are that good that Ferrari are now good when it comes to race pace we'll have to see but the fight is not over they can absolutely get race victory so definitely if you are a Mercedes or Lewis Hamilton fan um hold your horses because you can definitely get the race victory tomorrow Next up, though, is Ferrari, and what a performance by Ferrari. They did bring to this uh, Singapore Grand Prix a new update to the nose cone and a new floor. And so far, I think tomorrow we'll see basic uh, confirmation of it, but so far, it clearly has worked for them because nobody, and I don't care who you are, you cannot tell me you were expecting Ferrari to be on pole at Singapore. Nobody would have expected that. And how they've done that is, is unbelievable. Now, that might be because their new upgrade has worked, and I think it probably is because of that. It might be because of other reasons. We don't know. But how they've got pole position, I honestly do not know. But for the drivers, Charles Leclerc, another great performance. That's three poles in a row. And with the way Ferrari are going at the moment, there's no reason why Charles Leclerc can't continue to get pole position at the rest of the races in 2019 because he's very good at the moment when it comes to qualifying. For Sebastian Vettel, he didn't do bad, Sebastian, but I don't think you can say he did really well because even though he had pole after the first run in uh, qualifying three, he could have done better in the second run because he didn't improve his time. And if he did improve his time, he would have been at least on the front row, which for the team Ferrari probably would have guaranteed a race victory for tomorrow. Now, of course, Vettel can easily get into P2 at the start like he did last year. But it is still a bit of a shame for Ferrari that Sebastian could not put it on the front row. And I think Sebastian is definitely disappointed that he didn't put it on the front row. But again, at the start, he could easily uh, make up for that and put it on the front row, or put it not on the front row, but you know, put his car in the top two positions to help out his teammate, Charles Leclerc. But for Ferrari, 
They really could win tomorrow's race. That's not something I thought I could say. But they can win tomorrow's race. And tomorrow is going to be tough, though, for the Ferrari team. Because Mercedes and Red Bull are going to be coming right for them. And talking of Red Bull, let's go on to them now. And if you're going to say Mercedes were disappointing or were disappointed with their result, then you've got to say the same for Red Bull. P4 and P6, Max Verstappen, I know, will be disappointed to be P4. I think considering that Sebastian Vettel did not do really a final run because he didn't improve and then he pitted, I think Max could have put it in the top three. I think he could have. I think, and I think he knows that he could have done that. And I think he will be slightly disappointed, you know, to not put his Red Bull car on um or in third place because if he did then he'd be looking good i think to go after lewis hamilton and charles leclerc for the race win tomorrow because i think actually considering how great max is when it comes to race pace and the red bull car when it comes to race pace max might have tomorrow the best car out there when it comes to the race but starting p4 is gonna make that by the way sorry about my sore throat it's going to make that very tough. It's going to make it tough. And that's why I think he will be disappointed. And Red Bull will. I've got to say though. Alex Albon. I know it's his first time at Singapore. But not good enough. First off. P6. Again. Not good enough. And to be six tenths of a second. Off Max Verstappen. Again is simply not good enough. He's got to be better. You cannot be that far off. If I'm going to criticise Gasly for that then I've got to do it for Albon. It's only fair, and I am a fair person. So, Albon, not good enough. He should have been P5. And, you know, helping Max Verstappen take the fight to the front three tomorrow, but he's not going to do that if he doesn't get ahead of Bottas at the start. So, yeah, not good enough. Not good enough at all. And he's not really in for a great race. But Red Bull, I think, can get a podium... But when it comes to race victory, I think they will have the car pace-wise to do it. But because of how hard it is to pass at Singapore, they're going to need a mega performance by either the team or, you know, Max Verstappen. Because I don't really see how they can do it. Uh, but now let's get into the midfield. First off, Renault. P8 and P9. Great result for them. They were not expecting to be that good. And I think as long as really they maintain that result tomorrow... And McLaren have some bad luck. I think Renault will come away from this weekend with a good result. And hopefully they can do that. Both drivers did well. Daniel Ricciardo did very well. Be as close to Carlos Sainz as he was. And I believe, yeah, Renault, they're in a good position for tomorrow's race. Because they're always better when it comes to race pace than qualifying pace. So look, looking good for Renault. Hopefully they can maintain this for a bit longer in 2019. Next up is McLaren. For one of their drivers, it was good. Carlos Sainz, P7, did the best he could. He's so good at Singapore as Carlos Sainz, and it's not really a surprise that he finished in P7, so great for him. Lando Norris, though, he should have done better today because, one, he was too far behind his teammate in terms of lap time, and he should not be P10 behind both Renaults, so... Disappointing for Lando and also his qualifying two lap time was faster, way faster than his fastest lap in qualifying three. So Lando will be disappointed and I think he should be. I think McLaren should be because Lando really should have been at worst P9, probably P8 to be honest. But uh, still looking good though for McLaren. I think they do have the quickest car in the midfield. Next up Alpha. Alpha actually did better today than I thought they were going to do because in practice their car looked absolutely horrible but the pace wasn't as bad today but they still did not get into the top 10 uh, Antonio Giovinazzi though I have to praise him very good performance to out qualify Kimi Raikkonen and you know Antonio this is his first time racing at Singapore in an F1 car Kimi's raced around here for so long in an F1 car about qualify Kimi Raikkonen here, I think, is a very good effort. And I think we have to start giving Antonio credit. Yes, people want Nico Hulkenberg to be in the alpha. But let's be honest. 
considering how Antonio is getting on top of the car and improving, I don't understand why Alpha um, won't give Giovinazzi, say, more time to develop because he could end up being as good as Nico Hulkenberg later on in his career. You don't know that. He has, as 2019 has gone on, he has had a good season. So I think he absolutely should get some credit. And I think people should absolutely credit him um, for his performances as of late. Because I think since Paul Ricard, or even since Canada, I think Giovinazzi has been very good. But doesn't get the credit he deserves. And I know that's weird for me to say because I was very critical at the start of the season and before the season of Giovinazzi because I didn't think he was that good. But he's proven me wrong and he is turning out to be a pretty good driver. Uh, Raikkonen in 14th, not great for him. Uh, but considering that Alpha get to start whatever tyres they want to, they are definitely going to be, you know, there for points. Um, whether they'll get one or not, I don't know. It's really going to come down to luck and the start and, you know, how things work out of the pit stops. I, I'm not sure if they will get a point, but they'll be there in the fight for sure. Next up is Haas. Uh, same old story. Absolutely terrible. They have a terrible car. No point talking about them. Toro Rosso. Very poor today for Toro Rosso. 13th and 17th, I believe. Oh no, 13th and 16th. At this track, that's poor. That is poor. Because normally at Singapore, they are really good. But today they just had no pace. No pace whatsoever. Uh, they're clearly slower than McLaren and Renault. And even racing point, I think, to a degree. So, yeah, Toro Rosso not really looking that great. And I think they, like Alfa Romeo, they can absolutely contend for points. They'll be in the fight, but I'm not sure they have the car. Again, it comes down to whether, you know, things go right from the start and the pit stop phases. It does come down to that, but I have to say, very disappointing day for everyone at Scuderia Toro Rosso. And at Racing Point, I guess you could say for one of the drivers it was disappointing. Lance Stroll again knocked out in qualifying one. We, we've said it plenty of times, Lance is poor when it comes to qualifying, nothing more to say. Uh, Sergio Perez, P11, could he have done more? Maybe, maybe Perez could have gone to the top 10, but I don't think Perez would have qualified higher than 10th. So I think Perez honestly did pretty well because again, historically racing point are not that great here. I think the upgrades are, they're probably working these new upgrades for racing point, but not as much as they were hoping. So I think racing point, again, like Alfa and Toro Rosso, They'll be there for points. Whether they'll finish in the points is a completely different matter. And of course, Williams were at the very back. Uh, George Russell could have outqualified uh, one of the horses in Roman Grosjean. But uh, made a mistake on his final lap, meaning Williams are at the very, very back. But that's it for qualifying guys here at Singapore. And hopefully with the top five we have, I really do hope we are in for a great fight. As I think that top five, any of that top five, could be on the podium and maybe even win the Singapore Grand Prix.